Welcome friends. I'm glad you're joining me for another premiere video. I will be watching this video along with you, so feel free to comment or ask questions in the side chat. If you're watching later, hi, my name is Beth. Please feel free to leave me a comment below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. In this video, I'm going to be talking about bullet journaling versus the happy planner. I have used both and I'm going to tell you the pros and the cons that I see from my point of view. Hopefully this will help you make a decision as to whether or not either of these planners can improve organization in your home and or business. I will be providing my Amazon affiliate links below if you're considering purchasing either one of these types of planners. Uh, once you've clicked on an affiliate link, you have 24 hours, whatever you purchase within that 24 hours, Amazon will give me a small compensation that goes to help me with expenses for this channel. I really appreciate it. So first I want to talk about bullet journaling. I'm going to show you what a bullet journal is. I have all different colors. Um, I used bullet journals for probably four years um, to organize my home and my business. These things are awesome guys. They cost anywhere between uh, $10 and $22 each. And I was able to get four to five months of planning in each one. And what makes a bullet journal different from other planners is that the pages are completely blank. However, they have these little dotted grid, you know, dots here where you can make um, graphs and things like that. So it's completely blank. And I know that some of you have watched a lot of my bullet journal uh, videos before, so you know how I used it. But in the front, I always did a, a year calendar, I had to draw that out. Um, and then I had a lot of things, you know, numbers for my business. I kept my menus. Um, sometimes I had one page was for an entire day. Um, when I stopped journaling with a bullet journal last year, I started putting two uh, days on a page to save paper because I didn't feel like I was using it enough. Um, so that's what bullet journaling is. And if there's a task that you put down and you don't get it done that day, you just draw an arrow and you move it to the next day. I love bullet journaling and I do miss it, but I don't use a bullet journal anymore. And we're going to talk a little bit about that more. Um, so I'm going to link my bullet journal video playlist below and it contains sample bullet journals from I don't know it's about two years ago um, I designed journals I had monthly themes artwork and I also have tutorials in that playlist showing you how to bullet journal from beginning to end and when I first started bullet journaling like I said I had monthly themes and I spent a lot of time on the artwork. And due to time constraints, um, recently, when I stopped bullet journaling on December of 2022, um, I stopped the artwork. And so I also have a video in the playlist on how to set up a basic bullet journal with no fancy stuff. All right, so um, I'm curious in the side chat if any of you do use planners, if you use a bullet journal, or what kind of planner you use. I forgot to ask that at the beginning, so please put that in the side chat for me. Now, I'm going to tell you some of the pros that I see about bullet journaling just from my point of view because I have a full-time job, I also have an online business, and I have a home to take care of, and also I do caregiving for about three people. So I have a lot of things going on at one time. I have to be organized or I'll just go out of my mind. Um, what's great about bullet journaling it, for me was that every time I would buy a planner, there were lots of pages in the planner I didn't even need, I didn't use, and I'd have to either rip them out or cross them off. And then in a, you know, on the flip side of that, there were pages that I wanted um, to keep track of things, specifically eBay numbers. Um, and I would have, you know, I couldn't add pages to a typical journal that was already spiral bound. So with the bullet journal, you can make all that in there. You can, you know, make it your own and um, it's so versatile. And then if one way you did it one month didn't really work, the next month when you design your journal, you can add things or take away things you didn't use. 
Um, another thing that I loved about my bullet journals is it had a bookmark. Some of them actually came with two bookmarks. That's very helpful to me in a lot of situations because I'm flipping back and forth through pages and the bookmark was really helpful. Um, it's very small and portable. I was able to actually fit this in a large purse. And um, the main thing I loved about it is I made it personal. It was mine. No one had anything like it and it suited all my needs. I could always change it if I needed to. It also has a strap closure, which I love because, you know, sometimes I might put some pages in there that are loose and then the strap would keep them from falling out, keep it from opening up in my purse, things getting down into it. Also had a pen holder, which was totally awesome um, to hold a pen, okay? And, um, so I was always losing my pen or pencil. Sometimes I put a mechanical pencil in there. And also, in the back of all of the bullet journals, there is a pocket. And this is great to put receipts, uh, papers that are loose. And then when you close the journal and, you know, put the strap on, those things don't come out. So, I love bullet journaling, guys. I do miss it. Um, but let me, I, I'm going to talk about you know, why I changed and how I've adjusted. The cons of bullet journaling. Well, I would say one of the cons of bullet journaling from my perspective is it's more expensive over time. So if I can only get four months of planning in a bullet journal, that means I have to buy three of them a year. And I was spending about $22 per journal. And so, you know, multiply that out, that's what, 66 dollars just spent on planning and you know that's a lot for me but i know there are uh, companies that sell journals that are much more expensive than that but every time i started a new journal i had to go to the front and i had to copy um, what i had in the front of the journal before for instance my my yearly um, calendar i had to copy that you know I had to copy numbers that I had written down, make a new graph. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, a lot of this I did because I, my online business was more of a hobby and I wasn't spending as much time um, on eBay and Poshmark. And so I had that time in the evenings to, you know, doodle. I considered it a hobby, right? It was fun. Um, the other con that I see is you can only get four or five months in. I mean, if you put, I know some people that have bullet journals that on one spread right here, they'll put seven days, all right? And so if you, I guess if you put seven days on one open spread, you could stretch this to maybe six months. But I, I have a lot of writing to do. Guys, you guys have seen my journals before, how much I have to plan. I mean, some of these pages were just, you know, well, on these last ones they weren't. But you'll see in the next one. I, I have so many things to write down. And so having seven days was just not going to work. Um, another, which I kind of touched on already, is all of the pages are blank. So if you're going to have anything in this, you have to put it in there yourself, right? And that was time consuming. Another thing um, that's a con to me is you can't insert pages because all these are already pressed in there. You can, uh, some of them, sometimes they are perforated. I don't know if this one is. Some bullet journals are perforated where you can rip pages out, um, which I have done in the past when I've messed up on artwork. Don't believe this one doesn't feel perforated so it just depends on the company that you buy it from this one right here that I'm holding up is by Dingbats but I don't know if Dingbats sells them anymore the companies kind of keep getting sold to one another so I don't know so put in the chat below any comments or questions you have for me about bullet journaling I will probably refer you to the playlist though because there is a ton of information over there now I want to look at the happy planner so the happy planner I never was drawn to the happy planner um, I don't like the name the happy planner I don't know I just don't like it um, 
When I thought of a happy planner, I thought of a great, big, humongous planner that I'd have to carry around under one arm. Um, I didn't realize they made three separate sizes. So I have the nine uh, prong here. This is the middle one, it's called the classic. They have one that's smaller, that's probably about the size of my bullet journal. Um, I don't think I'm gonna switch because I am, I have, my head is so full of information right now with the caregiving, the doctor's appointments, the medications, um, YouTube, starting a podcast, that I really think that this is the size for me. I can fit it in a large tote bag. I cannot fit it in a purse though. But, um, so one of the things that I, that drew me to the happy planner, um, I mean, I looked at tons of planners guys, but I kept coming back to this, is this has one year, one year of planning. And I needed that because I've got all these doctor's appointments to schedule for the entire year. I mean, I figured this out in December, I was like, bullet journal. It's just not going to work anymore for me. So one year of planning goes in this. Um, that was the big, yeah, but a lot of planners have one year, right? So let's go ahead and go on by, you know, to some of the other pros. So one thing about the happy planner that I love is that you've got tabs that separate each month. Um, one thing that's kind of a bummer is that you would think that when you get to February, you know, when you pull February that you would write there be on February 1st, you're not. It's going to be wherever it ended up last month. So that I don't really like. I would have liked to have been able to pull up February and the first date is the first. But I'm learning to deal with that. Okay. Um, another thing I like about the Happy Planner is you can insert and remove pages. And all you do is just pop these out, right? Um, you can take pages out that you don't want. Um, there's not very many pages that come with a happy planner that I haven't wanted. Um, and also you can put things um, in there that you want. So, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Another thing, and I don't think I'm going to do this, but a happy planner, what you can do is at the end of the year, you can keep this cover and you can take all these pages out and you can just buy a packet of the pages for the next year and pop them in there. I don't think I wanna do that because I wanna keep all of these pages together in case I ever need to look at them. And I think it's kind of fun every year to get a new cover, you know, it's kind of exciting. So, um, but that's, that's that would definitely make it more affordable if you decide to use a happy planner two years in a row. And it also makes it less expensive um, because you're not having to buy the whole thing, right? All right, let's talk about some of the cons. I've already talked about a couple of them, but um, the big con for me is I have to purchase pages to add. So to be honest, by the time I bought pages to add, and you can go on Amazon, you can go to happyplanner.com, and you can see all these different pages that you can add to it. By the time I added all the pages that I wanted in there, I'd spend almost as much as I did on three bullet journals for one year altogether. They have these things called, I think they're called dashboards, and I wish that people, instead of making them dashboards, would make the pages because I don't want things that you write and wipe off. These would th be things like grocery lists, cleaning lists, um, budgets and all they are is they're just one insert that you put in there and you write on it with a wipe off marker and then at the end of the month you erase it put it in the next month and start over i don't want to do all that erasing and and, all, and a plus i want to look back on what i did last month and i can't because i've erased it so that would be my one suggestion to the happy planner company is instead of making dashboards or in addition to making dashboards that they put these in paper form um, sell a stack of cleaning supplies needed grocery list um, all these things and just put them on paper or have like you know 20 printed out 6.99 whatever i would love that i don't know um another thing i don't it's had hard for me to adjust to is there's no room for artwork so you know when you pull up Let's just say you pull up, um, you know, this month or whatever, there's not really room to decorate 
and you know like I did with my bullet journal and again I will refer you back to my bullet journal playlist you can see all the artwork that I did and I basically did that when I was in front of the TV at night watching TV now in front of the TV I'm working you know detagging clothes or just relaxing so but I kind of missed the artwork but I just didn't have any time um, to do it you can purchase stickers and washi tape to decorate though you know around the edges inside the the squares things like that but then again your work you're adding more money um, to your planner when if you would have just decorated yourself it would have been free but you know we all need time right so I don't know it's a it's a give and take it's a trade-off the other thing um, is there's no closure strap like there is on the uh, bullet journal so how I fix that is I get a long uh, rubber band and I put it like that because sometimes in my bag I've noticed that it will kind of fall open a little bit things kind of get down in there I don't like that there's also no bookmarks so um, sometimes I will have to take a binder clip and bookmark pages when I'm trying to go back and forth. Uh, you know, I'm trying to transfer, let's just say I'm trying to transfer February birthdays from the uh, yearly calendar onto my pages. I have to keep going back and forth and back and forth from the yearly calendar to the monthly calendar and then the monthly calendar to the daily calendar. I really like bookmarks guys another thing is there's no there's no pocket in the back to keep any loose pages or receipts and um, I really like to have that because sometimes I might go thrifting and I have my planner in my car and I'd like to put my receipts in the pocket I can't do that anymore so I just have them put them in my bag but I do miss my pocket I mean, I'm gonna stop for just a minute in case there are any questions or comments and um, let's just give this a couple of seconds so I can answer your questions. All right, now I wanna cover how I have integrated the bullet journal with the Happy Planner. <laughs> so um, I couldn't just use the Happy Planner. There's just no way. It doesn't meet my needs. It doesn't. I needed a one-year calendar but I also needed pages to keep track of my business, my home, my parents' home, their doctor's appointments, and so on. So um, the first thing I did was I purchased, and I want to say it was $11.99. It might have been cheaper, but they did charge me quite a bit. But I have a lot left. I bought dotted grid paper. So let me show you what it looks like. If I can find some, let's hold on just a second. I had some pulled up, but see, I didn't have a bookmark. Okay, so um, that's not it, is it? Well, it is. It is dotted grid paper, but it's super, super light. I mean, you probably, you guys probably can't even see that. So let's look at, let's look at it compared to. Um, oh, there's somebody on eBay trying to get a hold of me. So. If I hold these up, let's take this. I think there's a difference. I hope you can see it on on the screen that the dots on the bullet journal are much darker than the dots on the Happy Planner. That has been a real challenge for my eyes, guys. So any pages that I had in my bullet journal, I have recreated in my Happy Planner. So like this, this is what I put at the very beginning. It has all my eBay and Poshmark sales. And, but what is good about this is that I don't, I have more room so I can do more months. So I can, see I can continue this on for a year and a half if I had to. Isn't that awesome? Where in the bullet journal, I didn't have that room. And the same way for this. This keeps track of my listings, what categories my listings are in. By four or five months, I'd have to stop, make this again, add it, and then, but now I have a whole, see, I have a whole other section here. So, Happy Planner wins in that category, but it's a bummer that I had to pay for the dotted grid line, uh, grid papers. I don't know. I also purchased... Um, a pack of notebook paper. 
Now see these pages are falling out. So you have to be really careful with these pages on the Happy Planner. They do fall out. All right. So I I bought regular notebook paper also. That way when I want to write notes, I'm not writing on the grid lines. Um, I don't know if I can really show you some of the things. Well, we'll show you. Here's some, here's some things like for my diet, I wrote down a list of things that I wanted to eat that week. Um, phase one of South Beach diet. It was just easier to write with notebook paper than writing on blank grid paper. And then the last thing I just ordered, um, and I debated about doing this because I don't really think it's very secure, but I got a pass I got password pages. And so there's like twelve of them. And so it's like whenever you create a website, you put your password, your username. I don't put things like there that have credit card information in them, but like I developed an Instagram for my new channel. I developed a TikTok. Um, so I put those in there. Um, my printer, anytime my printer goes offline, I've got a page that says my printer, um, how to get my printer online and the password, um, our internet. I mean, I have those in the computer as well, but this is just a really quick reference. But I don't put anything on here that somebody could get a hold of that, you know, where they could get my credit card. So by the time you add those three different papers up, you know, it was quite expensive, um, I thought. But I have to have it, guys. have to have it. I'm um, going to pause here for just a minute and see if anybody else has any questions. Okay. So in the very beginning of my plan, I already showed you the first two pages. That's where I keep track of my sales. Um, here's the next one is how I keep track of my categories and when items are going to get moved to categories. Um, you can do budgets, you know, whatever you want. Um, then there's my um, things I can eat on my diet. That all goes in the front, all right, because I'm using that every month. Then I also write notes about YouTube, like videos that I want to do, um, anecdotes that I want to talk about on videos, things like that. I probably need to get the address uh, and phone number one, but again, I don't know if I want anybody to, to get a hold of that if something would happen. Um, then they have the calendar by date, um, January through December. I write down everybody's um, anniversary and birthday. It's starting to become difficult because I'll have my fifth grandchild in July, and so I'm already starting to forget. Um, here is a list of uh, product reviews that I want to do on my channel, and this is one of them, so I can mark it off. I have like 41 products. And then what I do at the beginning of January, um, this is the current um, graph that I'm making. This is really the only one I'm making anymore is how many drafts I have each day, how many listings I have each day, and what my sales were the day before. I was doing this fancy graph like this, um, where I was filling it in every day and watching it go up, and I'm like, you know what, that's for the birds. I'm tired of doing that. I'm not doing that anymore. So, And then I also was doing payouts, um, showing like how much I'm was paid out on eBay every week because I had weekly payouts and then I had Poshmark and then I added them up and showed you know how much I put in. I decided that was just kind of repetitive so I don't want to do it anymore. So all right so we go to you know, like this is cool it's got a little saying or whatever but I don't really need that right I can put my own saying. So this is January. So in January has the whole month the calendar for the whole month and that's kind of nice um, to have that there because I can just put things for the next. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. Then you turn the first page of January. Well, January 1st is in all, in, until all the way over here on Sunday. Used to have got all of this in December here. That's very weird for me. Um, 
I mean, I would rather have these all blank and start with one and have these put in December of last year. To me, that's a little bit hard to get used to because when I pull it up, I want to see, you know, the first week. So anyway, um, that's how I've integrated it. I'm very happy with the way it's going. I am changing things every month a little bit. So um, I'm also doing a weight page, how much I weigh, you know, every time I weigh. That's at the beginning of the journal. And also I'll put it in the, the date that I weighed. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I do. Um, well, on Friday nights we do our uh, menu because we order groceries to pick up. And so sometimes it, 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 it's very painful for us to do a grocery list. Like, it's just like, okay, what do you want to eat this week? You know, what do you want to eat this week? When it's like, I don't know. I don't know. So sometimes when I have a few minutes between my noon and three now, um, I will m go ahead and just figure out the menu on my own. So I'll take the week and I'll like, okay, what do I want to eat for my snacks? What do we, what have we not had in a while that we can eat? I start writing them down and then up here I write the groceries like that we're going to need for them. And then by the time we meet on Friday nights, it's kind of like our little date. We meet in the living room. With, I got my little pencil and she's got her pen. And I say, hey, I've already um, thought about some things we can eat this week. How, what do you think about it? And then she's like, okay. I mean, usually she's okay. She's fine. Because we don't like that ugh, back and forth. I don't know what you want to eat. I don't know what you eat. So I've just been coming up with ideas, throwing them in here, um, you know, while I'm thinking about it. And, and then the grocery list has gone super fast the last couple of weeks. So also, let's see what else. I, I do like this, which I did in my bullet journal. But I do like this. So... I don't want to show you guys because some of it's personal. So let's just say, what month are we in? We're in October. October 12th. Okay, so you've got three lines here, which they don't really mean anything. I mean, you could put times or whatever, I guess, right here. So what I do is I put down below in the bottom, I put my breakfast, what I'm going to eat for breakfast, what I'm going to eat for my uh, lunch, what I'm going to eat for dinner, and then at the bottom I put my two st snacks. So this is food for the week, all right? And then up in the top, that's all my eBay Poshmark related stuff, like, you know, um, draft 20, take pictures, put inventory away, order poly mailers, whatever. That's in the first one. The second one is anything I need to do for my boss that day or any other things like go to the groomers, exterminators are coming, take dad to the doctor. That's in the middle. So business, boss and family meals that's how i do it anyway hope that helps <laughs> okay well that's all i have for you right now so put a comment in the, either in the side chat or under this video and i will get back to you as soon as i can you know might be doing a follow-up video to this if i have enough questions thank you so much for joining me again don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and i hope to see you on my next video or live stream bye